All right, so we're going to start talking about uh, Maya Hair and Fur. I'm going to go to Project Window, make a new project, 2550, and call this Hair Fur Sarcona. Okay, so the fur system is like a separate uh, entity, uh, which is not currently enabled. All right, so Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, usually it's right there and it works all automatically. I'm gonna go into my Preferences and somewhere inside here, it should say Maya Fur. There it is, Fur MML. So I load it. And then the hair should automatically be there. Yes, and hair, there we go. So now if I go to my rendering menu, here is my fur and all of the items that are attached into the fur. There's also a fur shelf and here's all the fur shelf items. These are all just presets, that's all those are. Okay, if I go to general editor's visor and I make this bigger, uh, There it is, hair examples. Uh, here are some hair examples um, as well. Okay, so there's a couple of resources you can kind of uh, play with um, after you kind of understand what the tools are and what they're doing. Um, first off, just as a precursor, the N hair system is very good at animating hair. Okay, um, but we're not going to use it to animate hair, we're actually going to use it to control fur. Um, this system to kind of set this up to make it look like someone actually has hair and make it look realistic takes hours and weeks and days to get this stuff uh, set up correctly okay so we're gonna use some of these things I'm gonna go through some of them but obviously this is um, uh, an intense system okay the first step is pretty uh, I want to call it simple it's not really simple but simpler to kind of get something that looks kind of neat out of it okay so under the rendering menu is where all the fur menu stuff resides and I'm going to create a polygon sphere okay and on the polygon sphere I'm just gonna to go to fur attach fur description new and what this gives us is it gives us a bunch of furs sticking out at no particular angle or no you know it's not a random angle it's just right there if I hit play, nothing's going to happen. Okay, by default, fur is not a dynamic object. It's just kind of like a fur type thing. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of objects that have fur attributes to them um, that we would just use as a furry type thing but never actually animate it. Okay, if you think of like a sweater, a sweater has a bunch of little like little hairs or little threads that kind of stick off of it that make it look like a sweater. And we could use fur in that case. We could also use fur for grass. We could use fur for anything that would have um, tiny strands of things. All right, uh, carpeting, rugs, whatever. So when we create fur, let's go to the outliner and see what we get. Here's our sphere. We get a fur feedback node. And then inside the fur feedback node, we get a fur uh, feedback, um, another node, okay? This is the more specific one we'd wanna click to get all of our attributes. Okay, so first we have this fur feedback shape. The feedback shape is what we're seeing in here. So if I take this to, let's say five and five, you can see that I only have that many furs. Now this is just display. This is not render time. If I were to hit render, you see I still have a whole bunch of uh, furs showing. Okay, this is just display. As you get more and more into what you're doing, uh, this can become incredibly slow, so they provide this option to lower that, okay? But obviously the more we have, the more easier it is to see what's going on, okay? For accuracy, same thing. It's just display. It's just what we're seeing out here as to uh, what's actually happening in the fur setup. Color feedback, okay? If we don't have this on, we just get these lines. We have it on. We actually get the color of the fur, which is white in this case. Here's some render stats. You'll notice that visible and reflections and refractions is off. 
So if we had a uh, an object like so, and this was let's say a Mia. And this Mia was Chrome. And we were rendering through Mental Ray. There's a lot of ifs in this statement. Okay, we're not really seeing the uh, fur in there because it's not really reflective. I'll also add an extra light in there just to make sure we're lighting up the fur. Point light. There we go. We're casting a shadow on here, but the fur is definitely not reflecting um, inside that uh, area. I'm just going to take shadows off just so we can see that. Okay, so that's something where I would have to go in here and tell it visible in reflections and visible in refractions if I wanted those two things to um, actually work. And then we can see here there is the reflection of fur inside there. Obviously, it's a little bit blown out, but you get the idea. Uh, and then the rest of this is just standard um, stuff that's in here. Okay, and that's the biggest one is people forget to turn these guys on and they have reflections and refractions and then the verge doesn't work correctly or look correctly. All right, this is the big guy here. This is the fur description. So this is what this fur actually looks like. Okay, so inside here, um, the light model is essentially where we're getting our coloring from. Okay, specular, ambient, diffuse, and specular. Typically, I leave this at ambient, diffuse, and specular. It's only when you get into specific things that maybe you want to change the looks of um, these kinds of things. The density is where we're going to be controlling how much fur is actually on this guy. Okay, so let me go back to Maya software. Let me delete that. Because Maya software renders a bit quicker because it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. Okay. So if I go back and I grab that fur description and I take the density to, um, I add another zero in here. You can see that now we have this big furry ball of stuff. It looks like a big puff. Okay. So that's where we're going to control how many furs are actually being rendered. Okay. Remember we have this one, which is just display. This one, the density is actually how many furs are out here. So we have a thousand furs right now. The global scale we'll get to, but this is essentially just a way to scale up everything at once. This is the object that's assigned to it, just so you can see. Um, baking we'll talk about later. Uh, here's our coloring, okay? And fur has several colors. It has a base color, a tip color, a base ambient color, a tip ambient color. So I can choose, let's say, blue. I'll do the dark blue, oops, dark blue for the bottom. Okay, and I can go to the tip and assign a light blue for the tip. And you can see how basically these are just little gradients on top of here. And if I render it, same kind of thing. All right, so this is where if we go back to this guy, the color feedback node really comes in handy because we can't see those settings otherwise. Okay, and if you're in earlier versions of Maya, sometimes these settings are not automatically clicked on. And then the base ambient color and the base tip color, or the base ambient color and the tip ambient color, are gonna just fill in a solid color basically. So I'm just gonna make sure I have shadows turned on and lights. And this is what some of the funky stuff about fur compared to other things. I'll turn on my ray trace shadows. I'm gonna shift click the fur, and under fur, I'm gonna go to um, fur shading shadowing attributes and add to selected light. Okay. I'm also gonna make sure I'm running through mental ray and then render this out. Maya software has certain limitations uh, that doesn't allow fur to have shadows right off the bat. Okay, So now I can see that I have some shadows in there and it's going to take longer but um, it'll give us a better idea of what's happening in the next step. Okay, So when I go in here to my fur description 
and I start playing with these uh, ambient colors here, it's basically going to ignore, not ignore, but kind of add color to those areas, even if they're black, even if there's no light hitting them, or even if there's a shadow on there. So you can see how it's kind of lightening it up, okay? So sometimes you need to do that, but you have to be careful with these settings because this can very easily flatten your fur out too much. Okay, so you have to be just kind of um, light-handed when you start playing with these ambient colors. And typically, uh, you have to kind of look at, you know, the individual hairs and say, okay, well, the base shouldn't have a lot of ambient because it's at the base. The tip, which is a little, typically on fur and hair, it's a little bit thinner, so it would have a little bit more lightness to it. That's why I went with a darker color for the base here and a brighter color for the tip there. Same thing with this, okay? And I'm going to just automatically set this thing to render at half res, so it goes a little bit quicker. Okay, we have specular color, which is the specularity of our um, fur. We can choose the coloring of it. Uh, we can choose the specular sharpness. Uh, we can play with the length. This is going to be more of a visual one. We can play with the baldness, which is actually opposite. If you see this baldness setting is set to 1, baldness at 1 should mean everything's bald. And baldness of 0 should mean that there is no baldness, but whatever. I didn't write the tool. Okay, so this is where we can control how sparse the hair is. And here's inclination. A lot of these is basically you just get in here and start playing with them, and then you'll have a better understanding of them. You're not going to remember everything I say uh, based on this. So your first step in playing with fur is just to go through and look at all these different settings and see what they do. Also see what their default is. You can see how inclination's default is zero, whereas roll and polar are 0.5. And that's just because they can roll uh, either way. Oops. And sometimes we have to change, see I lowered roll, and that's how polar is gonna work. Okay, and vice versa. Okay, here's the tip opacity. This is one that you'll definitely need on here because um, fur has some uh, opacity to it. And the base is typically more opaque than the tip of it. So I would typically take the tip one down. If we get a little closer. And then we look at the alpha channel, you can see how we're getting a little bit of gradation in here to see that we definitely do have some transparency on the tips of this. Okay, I'm also gonna take my ambience down some more. Okay, and we could even go really far, I could say tip opacity uh, zero. And then you can see how we're getting this gradation uh, of opaqueness from the t uh, base of this outward. So there's, there's a different result, obviously. Okay, And a lot of this is going to be based on whatever object you're creating. If you're creating grass, grass wouldn't have really any opacity to it. You may have a little bit, um, but not a whole lot. Uh, if you're creating hair, you definitely want to have some sort of opacity on the tips of it. Um, here's the base width. Okay, so if we look at the base of this, uh, we're not going to see anything in here. Um, but let's say I put this up to 0 0.2 just to make it extreme. And you can see how the base of the fur itself is 2 units or 0 0.2 units. And then the tip is 0 0.03 units. So I can lower the tip width increase the base width and then I'll get more of something that's like spiky okay uh, there's also base curling and we'll see this one in the viewport we don't really see the uh, the tip width and base width but I can curl this and kind of get this to change kind of like roll and polar we're doing where they just do different things different functions and lots of these it's not going to be a universal thing okay um, like typically we might take the tip curl and the base curl down. If we wanted something that looked like that, it looked like these hairs had some weight to it and were kind of being pulled by gravity, okay? Um, but typically it's gonna be uh, in some of the advanced settings that we'll get to. Um, here's scraggle. So instead of the hairs being perfectly straight, we can scraggle them up. Um, scraggle correlation 
is just kind of adjusting uh, where the scraggle is. And then clumping will actually stick the hairs together or stick the furs together. Okay, and we could change how frequent that happens. So if our character, you know, just went through the water or mud, their hair is going to be a little more clumpier than if they just brush their hair um, and put some gel in it or something. Okay, and then you can also play with the clump shape to kind of control how this is going to manipulate. Okay, so these on their own, clumping frequency and clump shape, aren't going to do anything unless I have some clumping actually applied to it. Okay, and then segments. Imagine each one of these uh, fur is a curve. Okay, these segments are how many pieces that curve has. So if you look over here, here is basically like an angle, a pretty much like angle-y type thing. As I increase my segments, that's going to round out more. As I decrease it, it's going to be more jaggedy. So that's where you have to kind of decide, you know, obviously you want this stuff to look good, but you don't want to crank this up too high that now it's going to take 20 minutes extra per frame. Okay, so you just have to find the sweet spot of where that's going to work. All right. Uh, then there's offset, where you can offset the fur from the actual shape itself. And the purpose of this is that sometimes um, the fur doesn't seem to be hitting the surface correctly or, you know, landing on it correctly, or you just need a little bit more room. You can always pull it off the surface or push it into the surface um, a little bit. Okay. So this is all just like overall stuff. This is like everything that's inside of our, our object are being affected by this. In the details area, it's kind of deceiving. You see the small details tab and you click on it. Um, this is where we have base color and we can add stuff like noise. So instead of the base color being a solid color, I can add noise to it so that we would get more of a random color inside here. And then we also have maps. And I could actually paint a map for all of these coloring uh, things and put it on there. Now you can't paint the fur itself, but what I can do is paint on the object, and that object's painting will transfer onto the fur. Okay, I'll show you some examples of that. If I go to tip color, we have the same exact thing. If I go to base ambient color, the same exact thing. If I go to baldness, we have some other settings here. If I go to length, we have some settings that are similar to baldness. But all of these are going to have maps connected to them, okay, or can have maps connected to them. Okay. So again, we can adjust these things on a, an overall basis. So we're kind of doing this as like a, uh, a summary of the entire surface. Or we can go in here and start tweaking individual settings and say, maybe I want the length to have a little bit of noise to it so that every fur is not the same exact length to it. There we go. So that's a dust bunny. That's exactly what I was after is a dust bunny right there. Uh, frequency. It's controlling how many repeats are inside that, uh, that wave noise. Um, it's baldness, same thing. We can add some random baldness inside here. Scraggle, we can add some scraggle noise. Okay, so everything that's inside there. All right, so now here's where we can do some fancier stuff with this. I'm going to delete the stuff I have in my scene. I'm going to create a plane. The reason I'm creating a plane is it's easier to show on a plane. I'm going to go grab the ground, attach fur description, and you'll see that instead of just having new here, I have my fur description one. And that's the one I just created. It's kind of like a material where we can grab an object, assign a description, and then that fur will be on that surface. So if we have 17 characters with all the same fur, we don't need to recreate them. We can simply go through and attach a fur description. Okay, and we can also edit the fur description like that too. So this is the one we're gonna play with is this paint fur attributes tool. So I clicked on the surface. I went to the paint fur attributes tool option box. I get this setting here, these tools. And you may see have seen these before. Um, this is kind of like our pushing pulling stuff that we've done before. So two boxes pop up. This one here is the important one um, because this is going to choose what attribute we're painting. 
So let's say I want to paint baldness. Well, I'm clicking on baldness. I'm picking on the fur description right here. And then I'm just going to go through with my brush and say replace it with a value of 1. So as I paint this, I'm changing my baldness in those areas to a value of 1. Okay, and if you remember, baldness at 1 was meaning full hair. Baldness at 0 means no hair. So I can very easily just go through and clean up some of these. Okay, and if I render this now, it's not just display. If I render it now, it'll actually have those furs gone from that area. So if you think about a dog, I wouldn't want to have to grab every single face on a dog who has uh, fur and assign those. I'd rather just assign fur to the entire thing and then go through with this brush and paint out the areas that don't. Like its nose does not have fur on it. Okay. So I can paint those things out. I can paint those things back in. And I can even paint them at half. Okay, so I have less hair in some of these other areas than I do over here. Okay, so we have less hair, a little bit more hair, and then a lot of hair. Okay, it's still not a crazy amount of hair, but it's still a lot. Okay, so that would be baldness. We also have direction. Direction is a cool one. Let me put this up to one. Because I'm picking which direction these are moving. If we look at these, they all seem to be pointing towards the right. So as I click and drag, let me make sure that my uh, fur description is set correctly. Sometimes these other things like scraggle and uh, curl can kind of overtake these. So let me just set this to oops, 0.5, there we go. Good. All right. So now this is set to direction. Okay. And this one's not going to work unless I have some inclination on here, I believe. Yes. All right, so now that this is, has some inclination on it, I can click and drag and pick the direction of this. Okay, now I can have some scraggle on there. And I can have some rolling or whatever else, but it's kind of hard to see that sometimes when you have other things that are affecting it. So I'm basically I'm painting which direction this hair is facing. So now I go to render it, and we should see kind of some hairs going one way, some hairs going another way. That's what we see here, okay? I'm also going to go back to the baldness because it's hard to see, and fill those ones back in. And you can see, even though um, I didn't paint these other hairs that come in, that they still have the direction applied to them. Okay, you can still see that these ones are going this way, these ones are going that way. And I'll even go into my fur description and just make this density bigger and render it out. And now we can definitely see we have some splitting happening here where it's going one way and then these are going the other way. Okay. Now when we're painting these things over here, we're actually painting a black and white uh, map. Okay. And this black and white map, if I now go to my fur description, and I go to details and I go to whatever I painted. I painted baldness. I, and here's the map. You can see that now we have this map connected to it. And if I go down to direction or inclination, yeah. all right, it was in the uh, polar areas where the direction went. Okay, so there's the map for the direction right here. And any one of these things, I can go and grab and play with. So if I go to 2550, work, uh, hair, fur. If you check out where this is at, render data, fur, fur attribute map. Render data, fur, fur attribute map. Here is the name of my scene, untitled, because I haven't saved it yet. Here's the baldness, and here's the polar. So if I double click, there's the map that I'm painting, okay? So this is the uh, coloring information for where this is at. 
And you can see because I changed it, the, the baldness is actually back to nearly one. Okay, so this is actually something that we could open up in like Photoshop and we could paint further if we needed to. Okay, now this, uh, the graininess that we were looking at in that image is all based on this here. So if I take this up to 2048 by 2048, I can get finer detail in here and create uh, a better look to this. Okay, and like I said, I could actually bring in just an image and just use that image as my map. Okay, so I just painted this area right here. If I go back to my map, you can see how tight this is, how much bigger this is, 2048. Okay, and just to show you, let me go grab an image from one of my other folders. Actually, let's go to our sprites. Okay, there's my sprite image. I'm just going to copy that into hair and fur source images. And I'll go to my fur description. And let's say for uh, this one down here, map item. Go back to my source images. Go to my sprite image. And now I have the sprite image connected to my polar. So if we look at what this looks like, you can see how it looks kind of funky. Let's take a look at it in the render view. Okay, so now we have this like swirly type thing happening right here. Okay, and I can load in any kind of a, uh, other image. I don't think I have anything inside there. I can even do this. Let's go and just paint one inside here. So I'm just going to delete my. Uh, Leave the fur from the surface, and I can just go into here and go to um, lighting and shading, assign a surface shader, create a ramp, and I can color this black to white. There we go. And then I can use that as my fur. So I'll just attach the fur description back on. You can see that all the hairs have been reset. Okay, Because I deleted the description from here, it no longer has those maps associated with it. So then I can go to my hypershade. And I can middle drag. Let's try that. It's acting funny. Maybe it wants me to actually paint something first and then do that. So let's go to paint for attributes. We're going to paint the baldness, let's say. There we go. And now I have something here. So I can go to map item and then go find oops, map item and see if we can just drop that ramp on there. I thought so. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out this ramp. Uh, I'm going to save it to a file. So I'm going to go to lighting and shading, uh, batch bake. There we go. So now I've baked this out, and you see I have render data, mental ray, light map, bake surface, da 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 da. So I'm just going to grab that extension, paste it here, or just click the map button and go find it. Render data, render data, mental ray. Let's 
light map. There it is. Okay. So now that I've connected that to it, we can see that we definitely have less hair in that area. Okay, and if I want to change it, I can just go here. Oops, I can even just go into Photoshop. Uh, but if I go to assign that surface shader again, so I can edit this, and we can play with some of these settings and really make it darker, make the effect a little bit more profound like that. Okay, then again, I'll batch bake it out. And then I can go and grab the fur. Render data, mental ray, light map, bake surface. Okay, or I can literally go into Photoshop and paint something and then bring it back in. And I'll just assign Lambert 1 back to this guy so that we have some coloring that we can see. Okay, so you can definitely see where we've kind of painted that look to it just to give it that randomness. Okay, but this is really where this is really where the magic of fur comes in is that uh, we can set up individual maps for each one of these kinds of things. So we can specify length and paint a length map to control where fur is longer than other fur. If you think of a person who has a haircut, you know, their hair isn't all the same size. It's very, it varies, and it varies basically on a pattern of, let's say it's longer on top and shorter in the back kind of thing, okay? So you'd want to paint those kinds of things in there. Or maybe even use a gradient on there. Or maybe even go in here and say, uh, lighting and shading, we assign Lambert 2 to this, or a new Lambert. And I'm just assigning whatever, it doesn't matter, Lambert, surface shader. And then I can go in here to texturing and go to the 3D paint tool. And I could even paint on this if it makes it easier to visualize. So I'm going to assign a texture to this, pick a resolution. And then just paint. So I'm going to say, okay, here I want no hair at all. And then over here, put my color and choose white. I want a lot of hair. And then the rest of this is just going to have a little bit of hair. And then maybe I have just you know, splotches of hair on this area. Okay, and this is automatically writing a file out. Once I hit save, it'll write it out. There we go. So then I go down here to save. I have to save my scene first. And then hit save. And then I can go to my fur description. Go to uh, That is. And make sure it saved it. It should have put it inside of my texturing folder. Oh, I put it in here first. Sorry, Kona. That's weird. That must be a new 2014 thing. Hair first, Sarcona, 3D paint textures, test. There we go. Okay, so now we render this out again. And again, we've generated our own map where we have no hair right here, and then some hair, lots of hair, a little bit of hair. Okay, so you really have the ability to um, play with these things and get these things to look the correct way. Some of them are harder to paint outside, like uh, polar can be a bit tricky to paint because as we're in here and we're painting the direction, uh, for direction we're telling you which direction to go okay so in some areas it might be hard to see what where we want something to go unless it's a specific type of pattern that we know we want it to go in this type of pattern the entire time 
Okay, and we can look at that polar. There it is. Unnamed. Here for render data for. Why well, didn't save it as a name? No, oh, whatever. Okay. So there's lots of stuff that we can do with that um, workflow. All right. So I'm going to create a new object again. Okay. And this is the basics of fur. That's all we've gone through. Is just those basic how to set up the attributes for fur. Okay. Um, Paint for attributes, edit for, attach for, those are the three big ones. We can also use one of these as kind of like a starting point. So if I go and assign Ducky to this, what it's going to do is it's going to go through and basically edit our attributes inside here to look like it thinks that a duck feather or duck down would look. Okay. It's going to be not the right size typically ever. Okay. Because in here, this is where we would change that global scale. And the global scale is going to change not only the size of this, the length, but it's also going to change um, the widths also. So the widths will be basically, if I doubled that size, the widths will be doubled too. And you can see here, the tip width is at zero. Okay. Uh, we could also, again, make this maybe three or maybe even four. And render this out and you'll see how we get these nice little soft tips where it looks like this fur is really actually very soft and like I said this is a good spot to start where we go into here pick ducking duckling because that's what we want to start with and then come in and say okay well I don't want it yellow I want it to be blue so I can just slide this over to the blue range here look up to purpley there we go and then the same thing with the tip, I can slide that over as well. And then render this out. And now I'll have something that looks like a blue fur ball. Okay, so like I said, these are all good ways to kind of get started and go from there. We can also go to the presets and you'll see that we have all those same settings here. So we don't need to click on the ball and create a new one. We can just change it at this point. So I can say instead of that, I want it to be dreadlocks. There we go. And again, you may have to change some of the attributes like painting the direction or painting the scraggle or whatever in order to get it to look the way you want it to look. So there's dreadlocks. And in this case, you see the coloring that we have set up. You can see the, um, uh, in this case, they have a little bit of clumping. They have some scraggle on here. You can see the scraggle frequency is a lot. And that's what's causing the dreadlocks to, um, do that kind of thing. Also, 50 segments. Okay, so if we take scraggle off and we take clumping off, you can see the kind of hairstyle that, that we have. Okay, and then we could also go to something like grass, which is in here, and replace it. Now it's still called duckling here, but it is grass. Okay. And my global scale, every time I go in here and change one of these presets, all these other settings go back. So I may have to change my global scale. I may have to change my density. I may have to go through and change the um, widths. Okay. 0.2, 0.02. Pay attention to the, to the decimal point because sometimes it's going to be like 0 0.2, 0 0.02 uh, numbers. Okay. And that might be a little bit too much density. Let's cut this in half. And you can see we pretty much have something that looks pretty much uh, like grass. Okay, especially if we had this on a flatter surface and our sphere wasn't so uh, gray, it was brown, like dirt would be. Okay. Uh, so let's delete that for now. Okay, so that's the basics of fur. Okay. Now, fur, like I said, doesn't move, but hair does move. Okay, so I'm going to go to end dynamics. I'm going to go to end hair. And I'm going to create hair. Okay. Now there's three different ways we can create it. We can do paint effects, 
we can do curves, or we can do paint effects and curves. If you're doing actual hair, where you want to do the full-blown end hair, you would typically do paint effects and curves. Curves. Um, and then the rest of these settings, uh, we can specify either it's grid, meaning that it's just going to be laid out in a grid-like fashion, or we're doing it at selected points or faces, meaning I can grabbing specific faces of this and then assigning uh, those hairs to those uh, faces, okay? Um, and then the count is how many in this grid, how many we're going across, okay? So if I delete this sphere and make a plane, like that, and I hit apply, I'm basically going to get a grid of hairs on here. And if you look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by eight. Okay, that's where that number is coming from. So we can crank this up or down depending on what kind of hair we're looking for. There's also a passive fill. Okay, so if I were to hit apply, what I'm getting here are active hairs. So all the hairs that are in here are going to interact individually with dynamics. So if I add some more frames and I hit play, you'll see that all the hairs just fall. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff to calculate. So I'm going to hit undo. Put my frames back. Uh, so what we can do is add what's called a passive fill. So I'm going to hit apply. And you'll see that we don't have as many hairs. Oops, I rewind it. There we go. Now we do have as many hairs, which is what we wanted. But inside here, there's a bunch of like little blue things in here that are uh, being controlled. And what those blue things are doing is basically taking over what the other ones are doing around them. So if I have, um, let's say this hair here, because he's red, is my active hair. He is going to move. The hairs around him are going to follow his movement just to kind of help fill that in. Okay? That way Maya is not calculating uh, the dynamics on all of these hairs, just the red ones. And the blue ones is just leaving as those uh, filler uh, hairs. Okay? So we'll have stuff like this too. And maybe we'll crank this up. Like that. And crank that up. And hit apply. It's going to take longer. And so now we have in here a mix of uh, red hairs, which are active, and blue hairs, which are passive. So we hit play, and we're not crashing the system. Even though we're going to a crazy amount, we have a lot of hair happening in here. It's not going bananas uh, super slow, okay? Because a lot of this is being calculated um, automatically and then just kind of copied onto some of the other hairs. Okay, so typically we'll have passive fills set up, okay? Let me set this back to, I'll put it to 10 and 10. And then randomization is an important factor too. Before we were getting a grid, okay? With randomization, the hairs just kind of randomly go. Now this can be a dangerous thing because if it is um, too random, then we'll, we could end up with like a lot of hair here and not enough over there, okay? And then hairs per clump, if I take this value up and hit apply, we're going to have more hairs within each one of these little clumps. Okay, so each one of these clumps now has 30 hairs in it before it had 10. And let's see, points per hair. Um, this is just like we were talking about with fur. As we hit play, you can see the divisions that we have here. This we can play with, this we can play with, this we can play with later, okay? These settings here are the ones we want to set up inside of here right now. This setting here we want to set up right now inside this box, okay? And obviously you can specify it's static hair or dynamic hair as well, okay? So if we come into our attribute editor, let's go first look at the outliner. We have our fur feedback, which is just the fur feedback thing we created earlier. Uh, we have our plane, and then all of this stuff comes in with hair. So we have our hair system. We have the follicles, which if we look here, I can't see them very good. Uh, but those are little red things that are on the ground. We have our curves. 
and then we have the actual paint effects hair and we have a nucleus okay now the way it works is that the curves let me close some of these uh, when we create hair we get these little follicles okay and they're kind of like the follicles of our own hair these little dots that are inside here it's difficult to see but they're there these little dots that we have and the hair grows out of that okay and the hair and what we're dealing with is actually a curve so if I go and hide my hair you can see that what I have here is just a system of curves and as I hit play those curves are animating and when the curves animate they're moving this hair with them okay and then the output curves are that's what we're dealing with that's the animation part and then um, the nucleus is simply just just like for the end cloth and end particles is what's controlling the movement of that so if I go in there we have the same exact settings I can take gravity off hit play and nothing happens I put gravity on and they fall I take the wind speed up add some noise and you can see there we go I was facing the wrong direction so now we're actually blowing the hair into the wind okay so it's basically just like we had on um, the other stuff on the end particles and the end cloth okay so now this plane that's here in order for that to collide you can see that it just goes right through the plane we would just do the exact same thing and mesh create a passive collider because the nucleus is controlling that we need to make sure the nucleus is set to collide with it so we hit play now and you see that we don't really go through it goes through a little bit but not much okay and then it just dangles right there all right so now if we go to the hair system this is kind of like the uh, fur description that we were dealing with a minute ago so this is going to control the clumps per hair so I can thin that out or thicken it up it's going to control the display quality and again this is just display this is not render um, it's going to control sub segments so as we hit play there we go you can see the curvature here pulling up the sub segments will help smooth that out a little bit okay and again it depends on what we're after thinning will actually control uh, the thinning of the ends so if we look at this from an angle you can see how it's basically what it's doing is just offsetting the lengths of these okay um, these are already kind of clumping together so if we take the clumping off you see how they're all not off but down they're all basically like on top of each other as we take the clumping up we get thicker um, hair areas okay so now we're starting to get something that looks a little bit more uh, like hair let me take the thinning up some more there we go okay and then we also have um, clump twisting where we can actually like twist the hairs it's hard to see let me take my stuff down a little bit yeah you can see them rotating around okay uh, and then we have the hair width that's how thick the actual hair is okay we're not going to see a display here that's something we have to render uh, and then we have clump width scale and this is where we're getting kind of like our pyramid shape if you look at some of these hairs let me take this up to 100 you can see how we basically have like a pyramid right here if I take this scale and I adjust it here you can see how it pulls that out more pull it down and I get more of a triangle okay so depending on what kind of hair you're after you can adjust that kind of stuff here's the hair width scale it's basically the same length or the same width until it gets to this point and then it kind of tapers off and gets pointy and again we're not going to see that until we render it so let's render this and see what it looks like okay right now it's probably too thick you can see we have lots of thickness here and I actually probably put the thickness up too high we also have a hundred hairs in there so we actually have to thin down how many hairs we have per clump
Okay, so there we go. So now we have some hair. Let me zoom out and hit play. Usually it looks better after it's simulated a little bit and had time to rest. There we go. So now we have that uh, happening. And you can see the thinning that's happening here. If I take the thinning off, let me render this out. It's going to look like it's all the same length. So the thinning definitely helps uh, look a little bit more realistic. Okay. And just like before, a lot of these, you'll see we have these little maps in here where we can play with. Here's the curl of the hair, which is kind of like the scraggle. And we can control it. And this is the base here. And then this is the tip. So we can say we don't want any curling at all. Oops, zero. 4.5. And then once we get to the end here, then we can have it curl at the tips. Okay. So again, we can play with maps just like we play with maps in the other uh, area. And there's collisions in here. We can play with some collision properties, bounciness, friction, stickiness, dynamic properties, stretchiness. Uh, remember the stretch resistance, just like end cloth. So you'll see a lot of end cloth parameters inside here. There goes the hair. Okay. And you can see even with the stretch resistance of one, we're not getting a whole lot of stretchiness. At zero, it just goes on forever. We got 0.25, we have a little bit of stretch and bounce to it. Okay, so again, these are pretty much self-explanatory as to what they're going to do. And if they're not, it's a matter of just playing with it and figuring it out. But there's too many attributes in here for you to remember every single thing uh, that we're doing. Okay, turbulence. Um, here's the shading for the hair. So we can color the hair right here. Just give it a basic color. Let's say blue. Okay. Now this is just flat coloring here. And then this is where we adjust what the coloring of it looks like. So if we render this, oops, let me get a little closer to it so we can get a better view. If we render this, you can see that it's a darker blue here, then a lighter blue, and then this. Okay. That's coming from the hair color scale and it's also coming from uh, the specular color okay so if we take this up to more of a lighter color and we play with some of the specular powers of this we can get that to be a bit shinier there we go um, if we played with this and I said okay I want the hair to be really really dark at the roots and then I wanted the tips to be really light like that. Now we should have something that's really dark and then it lightens up at the roots. Okay. And then this is just my specular where my light's hitting. So that's why we're seeing that so powerful. I can obviously tone that down some. And then typically the softer the specular, the drier the hair is going to look. The sharper the specular, the wetter the hair is going to look. Okay. And then there's op opacity on here so we can actually change the opacity. If you look at the alpha channel, you can see there's, well, it's clumping right there, but in these other areas, we're basically at a transparent. And here, okay, so we have some transparency on there as well that we can uh, adjust. Uh, here's some color randomization, and you can see that there is some random parameters in the diffuse and the specular. We could even do some hue uh, randomization to get more of like a rainbow hair effect. Okay, so rainbow hair. Um, displacement, we don't really play with that. Um, curl, you can adjust, and curl frequency, you can adjust. A lot of these, just like before, it's a matter of going in here and just seeing what they do and getting an idea of, you know, what you want uh, those things to happen. Okay, and we don't have any presets for these, uh, but if you go to the visor, like I said, or if you go to nhair and say get hair examples, these are some of the examples that you can kind of base off of, you know, how do I get this kind of look, drop it into a new scene with the middle mouse, and see how you get it. 
okay see what parameters are using okay now all these parameters that we're dealing with here if I go to my follicles and I click on one of my follicles I have a lot of these parameters inside this so I could actually go into this and uh, manipulate these settings on a per follicle basis okay here's per follicle overrides override dynamics I can change the stiffness of it I can change the clump width I can change the attraction I can change some of the curling okay and the inside here is the curve which we'll get to okay so that's how you manipulate what it's going to look like so let me hide the hair Okay, so now we can get to the curves. Now these curves are what are going to control the hair. Okay, and you can see we have two different colors right here. Um, on the curve itself, that's basically going to get us back to the follicle. So we grab the curve, we can get to the follicle. We have different parameters um, that we can play with, but this is where it gets a bit too complex for uh, the time we have. Okay, so I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the features, and that's about it. So under and hair, there's a scale hair tool. So I click that, rewind it. And if I want this to be longer, I click and drag with the scale hair tool. Oops, I actually have to. It should be scaling up. Hair system. Oh, there we go. I didn't have the hair system clicked okay so now I can scale up the hair or shrink the hair to get it to be the correct length that I want okay and I hit play same thing updates okay now obviously my scraggle and whatever else is also being stretched so I'd have to adjust those parameters as well uh, there's paint hair follicles just like we had before um, uh, sort of kind of uh, in this case we're actually painting the follicles on here we're creating new follicles and we could also delete follicles if we wanted you know patches of non-hair right there or if we wanted new follicles we could add them in or we can go in here and paint passive ones and remember the passive ones are just going to follow what the people around them are doing or we can edit the follicle attributes and adjust any of these parameters okay we can trim hair we can extend hair There we go, we're trimming. It's hard to see, but we're doing it. Okay. So there's lots of different things that we can do um, in that case to play with these settings. Basically, just like we did with um, the fur, we can do inside the hair as well. Okay. Um, here's some hair textures. So you can paint the baldness, you can paint the hair color, you can paint the specular color. Um, here's the display. Now this is where it gets complex, okay? So let me hide these things again so we can see just the curves. Okay. Now on here, we have these curves. And like I said, they're being animated. Okay. I'm actually like kind of freaking out. I'm going to delete my hair system. And then I'm just going to remake it with less hairs. So I'm just going to put 10 and 10. There we go. Oops. Oh, I gotta get rid of the passive fill. And just for this, we'll do five and five. There we go. Okay. So now we have five and five hairs. And I can hide the hairs because I don't want to see them. There we go. Okay. So now on these curves, I can actually go in here and say, okay, well, instead of the hairs starting up like this, I want them to start like that. Okay. So if I stop right here and I grab the curves, actually I think I just grab the hair system, and go to end hair, set rest position from current. Oops, I do have to have the hair selected. Hair curves, end hair, set rest position from current. Okay, so what this means is now when I rewind, oops, they should have started back there. Okay, I clicked the wrong button, that's all. Um, so I'm going to go back to my curves. I'm going to go back to end hair. 
and uh, hit play again. Okay, that's where you want us to start. Okay, so I said set rest position. I didn't want to do rest position. I want to do set start position from current. Okay, so now what's going to happen is if I rewind, that's where it's going to start. Okay, now it still falls down because that's what it should be doing is falling down. So typically we wait for the hair to come to rest. And then we would go in here and say set start position from current. And it didn't work because I clicked the wrong thing. Let's wait again. There we go. I'll make sure I click the curves and then go to set start position from current. Okay, and then we rewind. We have less movement on there. Okay. Um, these start positions and rest positions, if I go to display and I say, let me see the start position. Okay. Let me see the start position. Okay, this is the start position. Uh, it's hard to see because they're right on top of it, but that's where it is. If I go to see the rest position, that's my rest position. If I go to current and start, or current and rest, or all curves, you can see how basically I have a multitude of curves that are inside here that are controlling how this hair is supposed to look. So this rest position is uh, where they're going to try to eventually get to. It's kind of like the hairs are trying to get into this one position of stickiness, basically. Okay, and we can adjust those. We can adjust those parameters. Okay, so right now they're just falling down. Okay, and the reason they're falling down is because of gravity. So if we go to our gravity on the nucleus and we turn this off, what's going to happen is it's going to try to pull itself. Let's rewind. Try to pull itself into that rest position. Okay, and you can see it's you know it's a little bit bouncy. It's just trying to get there. Um, let's view the rest position. You can see where the rest position is. Let's see current and rest. And you see how it's trying to get there. And if we let it go long enough, it should uh, get into that position. Okay, it's kind of settling. And eventually it will get there okay so typically what we would do is we want to style the hair a certain way okay so if we have let's say um, certain hairs that are, are are styled to the left certain hairs are styled to the right we'd want to manipulate those hairs okay so if we go in here and we see let's look at the uh, rest position I can go in here and actually edit the points of the rest position. And if I hold down uh, B and click and drag, I can softly select this. And I can just kind of move the points over a little bit. And I could even create my own curves and just have those being used as uh, this kind of thing. Okay. So I have some jaggedy ones here. It takes time to get those things laid out correctly. So now, if we hit play, oops, I turn my gravity back on. It's still off. Okay. You can see how we're getting this little jaggedy one here. And then this one that I edited, that must have been a passive one. Because that's not trying to get to where it needs to get to. Okay. You can see that that one's trying to get to that shape, sort of kind of getting there. Okay. So you would basically, you're styling this kind of hair. And if you look at it, I'm going to delete all the stuff that's inside the scene. And if we go to the end hair examples, and we pull up one, uh, let's say like this, you can see all the curves that go into creating something like that. Okay, and if we rewind this, and then we hit the render button, you can see how this is, the hair is styled perfectly to that. And if we hit play, there's a little bit of sag to this, but it's all kind of maintaining that hair structure. And again, it's trying to get to, if we look at our current position is here, our start position was there. Our rest position is here. Okay, so they're all kind of in that same spot and they're all kind of like stuck in that same area. Okay, 
Now they're also using this. This is a constraining sphere. And if we go under the N hair, um, they used to have, if we go to the classic hair, um, you would make collide here and you can constrain, uh, create constraints through here. Okay. So this is actually a brand new hair system that they implemented. Uh, that's a little bit different than the old one, which is down here. The old one does not interact with the end stuff, so you have to do those things separately. Okay, so just so you're aware of that. Okay, so now why are we learning end hair when we were just talking about fur? Well, if we go to a plane and I create fur on here, let's say we created grass, we give ourselves some frames, we hit play, nothing happens. Okay. Uh, hair is what's going to animate this stuff. So I'm going to go back to end hair and create end hair, and I'm just going to create the curves. Okay, so under NURBS curves, pick how many divisions I want. So let's say 10, 10. I can do a passive fill, I can randomize it. Uh, the length of the hair I'll probably set to 1 because I know it's going to be low and create. Okay, so now I have inside here. You can see I have these pink lines, those pink lines, blue lines now, are my hair. So as I hit play, okay, what's happening is the hair is perfectly standing straight up. So I have to add a little bit of movement, so I'm just going to rotate this slightly. Or I can go to my nucleus. Go to my nucleus. Grab it from the outliner. And add a little bit of wind to this. Oops, there we go. A little bit too much wind. All right. I'll also make my plane uh, a passive collider. And I also want to go into my uh, hair system. And I want to go to stiffness. Here it is, stiffness scale. I'm just going to pull up the stiffness scale. <laughs> Uh, what is it? Alright, that can't imagine that wind speed being too much still. Try gravity pulling it down is what's doing it. So let's take gravity and maybe put this down to one. All right, let me go back to my stiffness scale and just put my stiffness uh, up a little bit more. Here's the clump. This doesn't matter right now because we don't have any hairs inside here. Uh, clump with, bend follow. Let's take the bend resistance up as well. There we go. So we have a little bit too much, uh, a little bit too less bend resistance. So we were basically it was just flopping over. Okay, let's go a little more. Let's say eight. Let's go to my um, stiffness scale, and it's still. This should be doing a lot more than what it's doing. Typically the grass is too thick or too stiff and I have to adjust it. All right, so let's say that that is good. All right, we can adjust it more later. Okay, it's not affecting the fur at all right now. Okay, so I have to go under the fur menu, rendering fur, Attach fur description or attach hair system to fur grass. Okay, so I had the hair system clicked, fur, attach hair system to fur grass. And so now when I play this, my fur, if you look at the tips here, are actually going to be moving. 
okay? The hair is affecting the fur. And everything I would do to the hair to get the hair to move correctly, I can do the same type of thing to the fur. So if I take my wind speed up, just to verify that it's working. There we go. We can add some noise. Okay, and obviously if we render this, we'll get that thing. So I typically like to use fur as a way to get the look of my stuff and then the hair curves to get the actual animation of it. Okay, now obviously if I was doing actually a person's hair, I would not use fur for that. Um, I would want to use actually N hair. But your fur on here, you can create some really cool looks to it. Okay, it does have some limitations. Um, it does have some funky stuff like, you know, when we do our shadowing, we have to add the lights to it. Uh, there's also a separate fur rendering settings here where we can adjust some of the fur uh, settings if we needed to. Okay. And fur is one of those things where you actually have to up your settings pretty high in order for your stuff to look um, appropriate. So I'm going to go back into my fur. There it is. And change this to something like bison. I don't like bison. Let's go with uh, mouse. There we go. So let's make this global scale a little bit more. So three. Now with the global scale three, those hairs still stay the same size. Okay. So these hairs are still small. Actually, they're actually a good size now. All right. But if we scale this up to let's say forty-four those little furs are still the same size and they're going to affect them. Uh, the small movement here is going to affect these big hairs a lot. So if I rewind it and play, you can see how much movement we're getting on these because it's those little hairs kind of wiggling around. Uh, and you'll also see that the hairs here are pointed up and the fur is facing sideways. That's a result of us having some of this inclination set. There we go. Now we hit play and now they're interacting exactly like the other ones are, okay? So with this, let's not take this to 44, let's take this back down to maybe like five. And then we hit play. Okay. And you can see the bit of random motion that we have on top of this, uh, just based on where the fur is landing and where our noise is happening. It's too zoomed in. There we go. So you just have to be very careful with this and make sure you have enough, uh, a high enough render setting that you're actually capturing all this stuff. So typically like in the Maya software one, uh, we would actually want to take down this contrast threshold in the Maya software one in order for the stuff to render out correctly. Or a mental ray, we would just have to make sure that under our quality settings, um, that we have our subsample size up high, we have our quality settings up appropriately. And because we have shadows and uh, whatnot on here, it's actually going to take a little longer to render because I have some of my settings, it's going to take a little longer to render. Okay, so you can see how slow this is going to go. Okay, so I'm not expecting you to create anything, you know, uh, Sully from Monsters uh, Inc. Yeah, Monsters Inc. on here, uh, but you can create some pretty cool stuff. And depending on how this plane moves, if I just rewind and I just set some keys for this plane.
you'll see that our hairs are all going to move with it. And then one year I had for the fur assignment, I had someone go through and they created this scene. You can see all the hairs are kind of bouncing around. Um, they created this scene where they had a sphere. I'm just going to roughly show this. So they had this sphere and it was off camera. And it would come in and it had, you know, this fur description on here and it had the hair interacting with it. So it would come in, it would show you what the name of it was and then it would just fall down. And then the next one would slide in, show you what it was. And then fall down. They were all interactive, and you did the entire chain of these. And it was pretty cool, just because you know you don't really see what they are up here, but seeing them animate and seeing them move around, you really get a better idea of what uh, these settings are. Okay, so you're just going to create some sort of scene using um, fur uh, in that fashion. Now, here's bonus tips: is that the uh, I created a curve tool. Let's say like that. Under the N hair, I can actually convert that. Um, convert, there you go, make selected curve dynamic. NURBS curve, attach curve to selected surfaces. I don't have any surfaces. Uh, snap curve to base, collide with mesh, yeah, whatever. Okay, so default settings, good. So now I hit play, and you can see that this curve, let me hide the uh, original, this curve is now dynamic. Okay. And if I go to the attribute editor for it, here's the follicle. I can say that the um, here is point lock is at the base or the tip. So if I hit play, you can see that one of the points is going to just fall. And if I go to my hair system, okay, I get a hair system for this entire thing. I can control the stiffness of that point. So now it just kind of falls down like that. There we go. Okay, now big deal, I have a curve. What am I going to do with that? Well, once I have a curve, I can do anything I want with it. Uh, let's say I had a circle here. And I extrude the circle along that. Well, now I have an animated piece of geometry that's on here. Or if I took my original curve, which is right there, and you can see that I can move this around. Okay, well, let's say I parented that curve to something else, like I parented it to, let me actually grab this and delete it. I'm going to remake it. I'm going to create an herb sphere just for fun. And come on. And this will be parented to that. Let me grab the whole output curve and parent it to that. And then I'm just going to move this thing around. Okay. So just like that, it just kind of moves. That's all it's doing. Okay. Then I'm going to do my extrude. I'm going to click this partial option. And then with that partial option gives me our subcurves. And I can animate these subcurves moving around. That's what I want. So I'm going to go and say key this. And let's go up to 60, I think it was. Pull that up. Key that. Do the same thing here. Key this. Go back to zero. And key that. Okay, so now what's going to happen is this thing's going to like grow as it's going out there. Okay, and then it's animating. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, one of the students last semester actually built like a spider web using a bunch of curves and then converted all those curves into an N hair uh, curve and then connected all the stuff together. Now you could also do, because it's an N object, I can grab this point and I can do a transform constraint on it. Or not. <laughs> I thought that would work. Okay. 
there we go it was working i just didn't animate it um so it's not going to move with it but if i hit play you can see how it's pulling down and then it pulls up okay so we can manipulate these kinds of things also and get them to there it goes um, to do extra stuff on top of our other animation that we're doing okay and depending on our controls for our nucleus I can really take this uh, let's say I take the gravity down some I take the wind speed up and the wind noise up we really need to take that uh, settings down on this hair system All right, now there's no overrides there. I'm just making sure there's no overrides. Like that. So that bend resistance is so tight. Okay. So there we can attach a curve, like I said, to this thing. We can do any number of things even after this. We could have, you know, a multiple uh, set of systems on this kind of thing that would work. We could have a character walking around with a bunch of curves on him that are all kind of like alive and moving around and wiggling a little bit. And then all those curves are just kind of growing hair as they're moving along. Okay. So play with the hair system, play with the uh, fur system, okay, and just create something with basically with the fur, and then we're using the uh, hair as a way to control that kind of thing, okay. And feel free to go to um, YouTube, go to Google. Autodesk has some pretty cool uh, tutorials as well. So if you want to follow a specific one, uh, tutorials, hair and cloth. Start download. Oops, that's 3ds Max. Okay, but you can even look at this and see some of the stuff they're doing here because it's essentially it's the same thing. All right, type in Maya. Uh, so here's some basic fur tutorials, animating for dynamics, rendering hair. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways you can kind of get extra information on uh, lots of this stuff. And just like everything, we just don't have the time uh, to go into any one specific thing into a whole lot of detail. And realistically, all of these are pretty important to kind of know the, under, the basics of so that when the time comes where you're like, okay, well, I need to animate some curves, you can animate some curves based on your stuff, okay? All right, so that's it. Have fun. Enjoy.